challenges to free speech. Now let me tell you, this free speech is not a new fangled idea that our constitution makers have. <coughs> In fact, our founding fathers attached great importance to freedom of speech and expression and freedom of the press. Their experience of waves of repressive measures during British colonial rule convinced them of the immense value of this right in the sovereign democratic republic which India was to become under our constitution. They believe that freedom of expression and freedom of the press are indispensable to the operation of a democratic system. They knew that when avenues of expression are closed, government by consent of the government would soon be foreclosed. It was recognized that freedom of the press, although not specifically guaranteed in the Constitution, and under the chapter of fundamental rights, <coughs> was implicit in the free speech guarantee. The founding fathers believed that strengthening the concept of free press is freedom of political opinion, and the core of that freedom lies the right to criticize that government. Consequently, challenges to a restriction on freedom of the press are also a matter of concern. Now, as you all know, no fundamental right in our Constitution or in any other Constitution is absolute. In our Constitution, the fundamental rights can be restricted, provided the restriction is imposed by law, not departed the circular and electricity restrictions. And the restriction must be the grounds specified in the Constitution. And what is more, and that's most important, the restriction must be reasonable. In other words, it must not be disproportionate, it must not be excessive, and the validity of the restriction is to be determined by the judiciary. Now, when we speak of freedom of the press, I'd like to put the you. I'd like you to understand that freedom of the press embraces a variety of rights. The right guaranteed is not merely the individual right of the proprietor of the newspaper, or the editor or the journalist, it includes within its capacious content the collective right of the community, the right of the citizens to read and be informed. In substance, it's the right of the people to know. That's the content and of the freedom of press which we speak of. So please don't think it's the right of any individual, any organization who owns a newspaper. It's the right of the public to know. The right to know, of course, is not meant for gratifying idle curiosity. For that you go to Delhi Times or the AT City. It's not for that. The right to know is essential for the effective functioning of democracy. Transparency and accountability are sine qua non in a genuine democracy. In the memorable words of Justice Matthew, one of our great judges, and I quote, the people of this country have a right to know every public act, everything that is done in a public way by the public functionaries. They are entitled to know the particulars of every public transaction in all its bearings. Why? Because this enables citizens to make intelligent and informed decisions amongst a variety of choices and thus play their part in controlling the government and enforcing a continuity of the orders of power. As recent events have shown, informed public opinion is a potent check on land administration. As freedom of the press has a dimension and range that is vastly different from other individual freedoms in the Constitution. Press freedom embodies the principle of accountability, 
and enables the press to be an instrument of democratic control. Protection and promotion of freedom of the press in substance subserves and strengthens democracy, which of course, as you know, is an essential feature of our Constitution. Now, challenges to freedom of expression and freedom of press emanate from different sources. The primary source is the state. Now, different methods have been used in the past to curb press freedom or to control press freedom. For example, a new string policy <laughs> under the Import and Export Control Act under the garb of distribution of newsprint, the effect of which was to restrict the newspapers in adjusting their page number and circulation, was clearly aimed to curtail the freedom of the press. Fortunately, the Supreme Court struck it down in its judgment in the Bennett Coleman case. Another statute of employed was known as Renatic. The common people are physically intelligent. They are not so subtle. They are ignorant of freedom on the press directly near South Carolina. So another method. Increase the rate of custom duty on in news print. See the increase in rate. That's what they tell the court. They can increase the rate. After all, taxation is our privilege. So we have to take it easy. When you are leading with the freedom of the press, the steep increase in freedom and custom duty amounts to really curtailing in a it's an equal of knowledge <coughs> and it curtails the freedom of the press. Again, Supreme Court, rather brave judgment, now final judgment, struck it down and sent it back. Now you know friends, advertisements are the main source of revenue of any paper. A paper can't survive without advertisement. There's not two rupees and three rupees that you pay for the paper. That doesn't keep it going. It's advertisements. Now what do you do? Advertisements affect the circulation of your paper. And the restraint of the advertisements is restraint of the freedom of the press. Now, can a new paper, does it have a right to read the government and give me advertisements? Can they enforce that right in a court of law? No, not exactly. But a very interesting case arose in uh, Andhra Pradesh. A, a publication called Inadu, which was very critical of the government. Now the government, we do all advertisements. Cut off advertisements. Obviously the newspaper was to pay financial states. Now, the action of the government was challenged. I appeared for the paper in the Andhra Pradesh High Court. The High Court did not accept the contention that the newspaper has a fundamental right to obtain the advertisements of the government. It, however, ruled that government cannot exercise its power or privilege to favor one set of newspapers or to show its displeasure against another section of the press. It should not use the power over such large funds as its hands to muzzle the press or as a weapon to punish newspapers which criticize the policies of the government and its actions. It has to use the funds in a reasonable manner, consistently with the object of the person. What's the object of the person? To let the people know about the government's activities, about the government's achievements. Now, it is for that purpose that inventors have to be given and not as a weapon to muscle the press. Again, very good judgment. And that has kept the government on its toes. But unfortunately, this my Supreme Court judgment, the trial high court judgments, my experiences, and I'm sorry to say, the leading national deities are reluctant to challenge the government's action on grounds of a consideration of expediency. In short, they don't have the guts to take on the government. And that's the problem. Another important challenge of freedom of expression emanates from banning of books, plays, performances, movies, in other words, state censorship. It is a paradox. 
that humanity is the only for freedom of expression, in times ancient and modern, is matched by the urge for its suppression. The great Plato was a respectable exponent of censorship. And Milton, who thundered in his famous poem, Apologica, give me the liberty to know, to utter, to argue freely according to our conscience of our liberties, he became common censor. So that's the paradox. Now, the real sting of censorship, or the real challenge, the real onslaught, is by prior restraints. They are the most potent restriction on freedom of expression. The sting of censorship lies in prior restraints, which affects the heart and soul of freedom of expression, because the expression is snapped out before its birth. It doesn't see the right of day. The communication in question may never see the right of day. Suppression by a stroke of the pen is more likely to be applied by the censoring authorities than suppression through a criminal process. And thus, there is far less scope for public appraisal and discussion of the matter. That is the real rights of prior restraint and is the irresistible attraction to the sense. Again, the judiciary has been a vigilant and courageous sentinel in the famous decision. Now, there is a movie called Padma and Pronunciation. Ori Ore I hope it's okay. Now what happened? The theme of the movie was that this reservation policy is abuse. People that abuse it, misuse it, and get into employment and secure admissions in educational institutions by misusing the policy. Now, it's the fact it happens, anything can be misused. But the movie was banned. Movie was banned, and one of the reasons given is a famous case where lawyers have to do is Ranga Rajan versus Seto Tamina. And one of the reasons given was that the exhibition of this movie was banned because of those threat of demonstrations, threat of burning the theatre, threat of violence. The Supreme Court said this absurd. If the movie passes, it has been passed by the Court of Censors, is permissible, there's nothing of routine or uh, offensive about it, then to say that it can't be banned because of these threats would be to hold the freedom of expression as hostage to a very internal group of people. And actually, the uh, ban was struck down and it has been one of the great cases where the freedom of press was maintained. You see, the trouble is, judiciary has provided generous protection of freedom of the press in several cases. One should have taught the judiciary and press, the press are natural allies. Both the press and judiciary perform in their own way the function of checking and controlling the views of governmental authority. The, this function is performed by the press by exposing deception and secrecy in the working of the government. The courts perform their role by enforcing accountability of the holders of power. Unfortunately, there appear to be natural adversaries in cases where the court punishes journalists exercise of its contempt jurisdiction. Ladies and gentlemen, take it from me. In practice, the content power is very rarely used. It's only in extreme cases that a fine has been imposed, or I don't think anyone has been sent to jail, to my knowledge. But one main problem was, in the law of contempt, truth was not supposed to be a difference. This was what we the inheritor of the old British thinking, so, if a man said, yes, yes, I've said this, I've said this judgment is not only erroneous, it's dishonest. The judge was right. I'll prove it. The law was, look, you can't. And if he insisted on proving it, it was three months, he got six months. Now, this was an anomaly. 
in libel to the defense. If a man calls a man that he is a cheat, another person will say, if he is sued to libel, can I prove it? So fortunately, and this is something for which I take credit before I retired as Attorney General, I said you must amend the contempt of court statute and permit the defense of youth as a permissible defense. If the person fails, it's a little matter. Then deal with him severely, but you can't prevent the man from saying that I've got documentary evidence, I've got unbased impeachable evidence to prove my allegations against the judicial officer to be true. Now that Amendment has gone through, and today, bona fide defense of truth and public interest is an admissible defense in a contempt action. You see, ladies and gentlemen, the greatest threat, the greatest challenge is from non state actors. And the main cause is the rising menace of intolerance. We have reached a stage where even moderate expression of a different point of view is due to resentment and hostility. And there are possible demands for bends. This banning itch has become infectious. And as then you say six are offended by certain lines in the movie or in the song. Christians are offended by Da Vinci Court. They say, have it banned. Now, the British High Court invalidated the ban. Now, do you know, today, Professor Ranbir Singh, in academics, you will not be able to write an authentic book about a spiritual or a revered political leader without incurring the hard consequences on yourself. You write a book about Shivaji making some unfavorable consequences, you know what happened? Author, American author called Dane, he wrote a book on Shivaji. In some parts there were some unflattering references to Shivaji. Very well. You could have rebutted it, you could have retaliated it, but he was prosecuted. Prosecution was quashed by the Bombay High Court, confirmed by the Supreme Court. Then the demand was made extra that time. That's ridiculous. Extra that day and uh, sent him back. But just see. But you know what's fun? Lane did his research in a very prestigious institute called Bandarkar Institute in Pune. <coughs> and this goons vandalized it. So many valuable manuscripts were lost. So much of learning which was stored in the institute was lost. What? But again, this is work. Now, this is mobocracy in action. This is fascism in action. And this is intolerance at its peak. And this, we have to meet that challenge. Now, how do you meet the challenge? Because if this goes unrestricted, then this will be dried up. There won't be any vigorous debate. There won't be any progress in development in the field of science and any other thing. And when dissent dries up, and the dissenter feels uncomfortable. He feels that if I write this, well, I'll be subjected to dire consequences, then democracy is under siege. And that's very important, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we have a section called Section 66A. Can you give me a copy hand at that? I can never understand. Of course, as I said, freedom of expression is not absolute, you can restrict it, but this section, what is that? Well, I know it. Under this, any expression, the mark of us, with a person who to be false, which creates inconvenience, which causes, look the words, I've never seen an absurdly ridiculous section like that. Any information, which causes annoyance. Well, I don't know, annoyance. Many things cause you and me annoyance. <laughs> causes inconvenience. Oh, oh, oh. Inconvenience. <laughs> Danger. Obstruction. Insult. Injury. Criminal intimation. Enmity. Hatred. Hatred. Persistent of making such computer resort may be liable to imprisonment of CS. Now, this in India. 
What is this decision? What is inconvenience? What is advance? Well, no one likes to be criticized. It may annoy you. But you don't publicly prohibit it and send the person to jail for three years. So we have to really, if these are the challenges we have to meet, we all have to meet it. Civil society has to pay its toll. Very important. Academics, learned people, I mean, well-informed people must play the role. I think education is also a very important part to play because it is the intolerance which is at the root of this. Anything critical must be banned. Not only banned, must be punished. There, I do say, this has to be a joint struggle. Not a joint struggle has to be a crusade. Because if we don't check this, tomorrow we won't be able to say anything thinking that it's called inconvenience, that it's called annoyance. So we'll just shut up, keep quiet and go into a home. And that's not the India I lived in, that I was born in. That's not the India our founding fathers contemplated. That's not the India of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru and other great leaders. What happens? There is one party in the state from where I come, Maharashtra, I won't name it, but you know it. <laughs> if they think a particular electronic channel has said something, has portrayed them in an unfavorable light, or not a good light, what happens? Do they protest? Yes, they do. How? They go to the channel, vandalize the thing, destroy the furniture, and then hold them. Now the problem is, the state should really go against the lawmakers. There's no use saying to suppress free speech on the ground, it will lead to violence, it will lead to disturbances. That's the main problem. People acquiesce. This is where self censorship takes place. Let me give you an example of I'm not revealing a secret. After the judgment in Ura or Ramatide, which laid down very Fine principle, there was a question about Sanan Rashi's book, Satanic Verses. So I know Kushan Singh. So I told him, this is a very good judgment, Kushan Singh. Sorry, judgment or no judgment. I'm not, as a director, managing director of Penguin, our duty to my readers and our company. I know if I publish it, or if I publish any book of Shivaji with the critical, there will be the office will be vandalized. But Kushan, what is this? You're being a coward? And yes, I'm being a coward. Because law will come to my rescue. The state will tell me you're doing that. So ban this. The real answer would be suppress those lawbreakers, not suppress freedom of expression. Now, this is what we have to find. This is what we have all. Your members of the civil society, if freedom of expression means something to you, this is what you must fight for. Don't say free speech, freedom of speech. There must be freedom after speech. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> and there must be no reprisal. <laughs> of course, lawfully, if you defame someone, it's a different matter. If you blaspheme a prophet, there are laws, 153 and others do it. But not this mentality, not this atmosphere. So I appeal to all of you, the civil society, all together have to meet the challenge. Civil society, educational institutions, which was teach inculcate the value of tolerance in students, make them realize that there is no one way alone to salvation. And no one philosophy or ideology has contains the entire truth and wisdom. And the press also has an important part to play. And the press must constantly, wherever these ideas of intolerance come, condemn them, suppress them. Don't be worried about what will happen to your channel. You have your own security guards, the police doesn't help you. But this is a very important thing, friends. I really worry about it. Because if this goes on, as I said, we we'll have to keep back. Acquiesce in it, ask them to go and
ओपनली इन्हें बात कर दिया क्यों क्या नहीं वो लोग मारे गए डेमोक्रेटिक इंडिया दिस नॉट द लिबरल इंडिया इट वॉज कंसीव बाई फाउंडिंग फादर्स एंड इन नॉट द लिबरल टॉलरेंट इंडिया विच यू ग्रो अप इन इन विच माई चिल्ड्रेन एंड ग्रैंड चिल्ड्रेन ग्रो अप इन थैंक यू